To the slide so it's going to malfunction. I get one round maybe. Right now he's trapping my trigger finger which is indexed. Let go. So my trigger finger is indexed and he's grabbing a hold of that. So now am I going to be able to fire one round? You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe not. Let's say I could get my finger in the trigger. Do I want to fire a round when he has the muzzle in this direction? Perhaps there's uninvolved third parties over here. I can't just squeeze off a round, right? That's, but if he is holding it directly in front of him, then hell yeah, why not try to squeeze off a round, you know? Or even come up here, you know, get your round that way like we talked about yesterday. One of the things that we're going to capitalize on is when I'm holding the pistol as I'm supposed to hold it, high up on the back strap, a nice grip, I am holding this in a superior manner to any way he can grab it. Even if he grabs it with two hands, I'm holding the gun the way it's designed to be held. So I am going to have an advantage when we start to try to wrench it from the bad guy's hands. So if I grab like this, try to dive in underneath that like I just did, it doesn't work. It's negating that technique simply based on the way that I grab the pistol. So we need a technique that works regardless if he grabs with the right hand, left hand, two hands or whatever. So when he grabs a hold of the pistol, what I want to do is I want to feed him this pistol. When he grabs it, he's probably going to want to pull it toward him. In this sense, we're using kind of a martial arts philosophy, traditional martial arts philosophy that we're using his own energy against him, right? It's unlikely he's going to grab that and try to force it back to me. He's going to pull it. When he pulls it, I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in extreme slow motion. As he starts to pull on that pistol, I'm going to step into the pistol and toward him. Remember how I said yesterday when we were doing the unarmed combatives that if you're taking his space, you're winning the fight? That's exactly what we're doing here. So here's this one aggressive step here. Notice how this gun, what position am I in right here? That two-handed retention position we talked about yesterday. Now I'm going to take another step and look how much pressure I give him there. And then as I extend my arms, I pull and twist. Again, set it up. Move. Good. Again, set it up. Move. Yeah, guys, common errors here. Watch. Common errors are this. He grabs a hold of it, and I'm trying to move forward with the gun in free space. I don't want that. I want to collapse to the gun here. Notice how also my center of gravity is lower than his. My body posture is aggressive and leaning toward him. He grabs, collapse. I'm almost hitting him with my shoulder. All right, so that's what we need. So now let's step it up just a little bit and be more aggressive with our action there. Move. Move. Good. Nice. Your balance is starting to go for that. Step forward with your right leg, allow the gun to collapse to your chest. Two, step forward with the other leg and drive. Okay, it's so small with your hands. Three, go and twist. Yeah, there's not much in the knee. Boy, that's unpleasant. Grab him there. Woo. Doesn't matter how strong that dude is, he's not hanging on to that gun. I mean, there's not much to hang on anyways, you know? Hey, guys, after we've extracted the gun, let's add the tap rack assess. Now, one of the things people will do is they will grip in a way. You want to come up with the book? Where, didn't you guys just do this? Yeah. Where he's gripping behind that, right? And that makes it harder for me to pull the gun free. I'm not going to do it super hard and fast, but if I do it with a little bit of energy, it still works. So I'm here. I have the lever dragging back. He's going back too fast for this to be of that much use to him. It's not that great of a handle. Right? Yeah, I even tried with on the wrist. He can grab the wrist and you're I'm doing the exact same thing here driving him back and that's in slow motion. I'm going to use the outside of my forearm here to strike this juncture between the gun and his hand. It's not based on total precise application. It will work. It give, you have a huge margin for error here. The mistake is to try to do this right where I'll slide right off. I'm not doing that. I'm just here. I'm pulling back and twisting just like that. This could not be simpler. Hold on as tight as you can. As tight as you can, fucking hard. If he's grabbed my gun, my first goal is to retain possession of this gun to get his hand off. Then I'll worry about beating his ass, okay. right? So how you may beat his ass there, there, there's a lot of things you could do. One is this, two is that, you know what I'm saying? You okay. want it, take okay. it, tap, rock, so assess. So it's just a matter of... Now, I probably can't shoot from here, even if I wanted to, right? 
because it's gonna be out of battery most likely. So from here, look at this. I could give him one of those. I can give him one of these. I can strike him here. Step back, tap, rack, assess. Yeah. And even, even without that powerful strike, if as you're going back, concentrate just a little bit more. Instead of striking his hand off, moving your hips. So I'm here, but it's not so much this as it is the movement you're really of just your body. You're swiping it off. Absolutely. <laughs> Against a left-handed only grab, we talked about if you do it hard and fast, it can still work. Also, when he grabs this way, it's a little bit more difficult, but it, what do I do? Look what I do. So I get a good strike on this, as opposed to I can't reach his arm, right? So to me, this is a common sense thing, but for you guys, it may take a little, because you haven't done it as much. So he grabs left-handed only, I'm coming in here and striking off, boom, immediately retaliating, right? That can still work. That's the same thing we just did, right? We talked about the hazards of that though. Another thing you can do is to be on the outside. I always use, let me have the gun. I always use the term pry from the outside. Yeah, see the, at yeah, first I was just like he says, if you step in correctly, but it works, it allows you to stay on the outside. That's almost right there. Yeah, it would allow this to become compromised. So watch, let me go slow. So, super slow. He grabs, so watch, I'm coming in this way. Collapsing into the chest. And that compromise, not bad, a little bit more. A little bit more of this. So he grabs, I'm coming in, I want a little bit more of it. You know what I mean? A little bit more of it. Instead of being like this, exactly. Your deep in, also you're allowing this to collapse, which is compromising his grip. I'm already broke. And then down right there. Boom! Set up for that. Do the left hand. I used to teach that where you actually grab, you maintain possession of him there. And then the thing is, then I, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it's such a high likelihood that your gun's going to be out of battery anyway. Because I would teach you to shoot, shoot, from, here. shoot from there. Yeah. Well, you might not shoot from there, but you can sure strike from there. And it, it's, if you retain that, that's just a bonus. When you know he I mean? does it right, he's so far behind me. Sure. Where'd he go? Yep. Yep. You know, he totally has my back. That's awesome. And now I pull it free. First technique. That's the first technique. Push, pull, twist. Now what would I do? Drive off and try to scramble. Ultimately, I want to get to my feet. But this gets you in a lot better position with him directly on top of you, right? Same thing, but he holds on to the pistol when I do that. I'm here. I drive. He holds on. Now look at this. Tap, rack. Right? Thanks. Unorthodox, but it can work all the way up. Do it. Good. If you roll all the way over like this, that's fine. That may happen. Launches him off, comes over with him, gets to his feet, tap rack assess. That's freaking picture perfect. Right? That, that's ideal. Now, if he doesn't let go, if you don't have enough strength to buck him off, there's all kinds of weird things that can happen. But once you get him extended where he's off balance, then you should be able to pull and twist your gun free or pry your gun free by putting your hand underneath. Remember, even from the ground, there's no magical thing that happens. You still have to tap, rack, and assess, even though you're in an awkward position to do so. You gotta launch off of that leg. Launch with Barry. Right. right. I'm still Yeah. 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 So we're here, right? And we're doing this, and Jake has jiu-jitsu background and stuff, has some idea what he's doing on the ground. He says, yeah, but I'm not going to allow you to do that because I know that's going to take my balance. I'm going to try to direct the gun into you down more like this as opposed to that way. That's fine. You just do the same thing, and what it does is it has a greater chance that you're going to end up on top of him just like you did. So it's not going to be that you separate as cleanly if the guy holds the gun tight to you it's almost going to be more advantageous for you on your back if he does do that, because you're going to be who's the, who's the sweeping him. So I have both hands on the gun. What I demonstrated before is bringing my feet up, driving off my left foot, and twerking my body to kind of bridge and do that. Right. Now he's what Jake push. is saying is, here's, well, I don't want you to do that. Okay. If there was no gun in play, uh -huh. do you mind? Yeah. If there was no gun in play, the first thing he wants to do is shift my weight that way or this way. Right. Right? All right. And I know as soon as my weight shifts, You're I'm going to end up upside down. Okay. This is actually much Something easier like to get him off you when there is a gun that he's holding. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to compress straight down and I'm shrinking my body. So what are you doing? You're pushing the gun towards his nose? 
and I'm doing the Great same on. thing. And what that does is we just stay connected. Now okay. I would be on top of them still, and then here I have leverage, so I would okay. eventually pry that free. Now yeah. it is pounding my head into the ground, right? Okay. Okay. All right. The space is not a horrible thing because you're not really doing a, a tiny thing like this. You're doing this. <laughs> oh, that's it. Okay. So yep. you're filling like, all that. I'm space. doing this. Yep. Yeah, so you're filling all that space. If they know space. what they're doing, they're going to sit on you and sit high. If they know yeah, they're, they're going to sit on your armpits, not on your hips. That's why I was crawling up and putting my knees in his armpits but, and my butt here. Gotcha. And even okay. if you don't have a bridge or a whatever you want to call it, a buck that's that clean, that's that good, that's that effective, uh -huh. the fact that he is holding on to your gun, unless he lets go, in which point you so have the gun. You know? Having the gun in play made it even better because gotcha. when I bucked him, his center of gravity was over his hips, right? When you're fighting over the gun with me, imagine I'm laying down, mm -hmm. your center of gravity's here, and I'm in control Left of it. Left foot driving him this way, hold on to it. Now, if I want to pry free, it becomes more, prop see what I mean? It becomes more problematic for me to get to my gun. Remember with the clinch we talked about being on our gun side, right? This is like, in other words, his head is on that gun side, this way. You see that? My head is not. Same thing we talked about with the clinch. So up. So now we need you. Here, if we go to the other side, boom. Right? Now. My head is there too, so I could pry more easily. And also, it's easier to shoot like this than it is like this from the other position. Where was that pry at? Here. Okay. Boom. I would try to pull it free like that. Well, let's if, say if I couldn't, and if he holds on, then the pry, again, this isn't sophisticated, it's just adhering to that concept. He holds on. I release my right hand and I just start prying just like this. Okay, Did see? I just muzzle myself? Yeah. But imagine now if you tried to draw and someone was doing that to you. It's going to interfere with your ability to get the gun out. It's not the same as disarming him, but it's going to disrupt him for a second. What am I going to follow that up with? A strike, a punch, taking his balance, maybe coming in here, right? So that is just the slap approach. And here, it seems natural to do this. I could also slap here. All I'm doing is try to interfere with his ability to immediately bring that weapon to bear. There is a problem inherent with this technique as well as the next one I'm going to show you, which is to actually try to pin that in place. So you're maybe come here and actually pin this elbow or whatever you're going to do from here. That's pretty damn cool. That's a step up from just slapping it, right? If I'm able to pin it in place, but that doesn't necessarily solve the problem either. The problem with both of those responses is that if my timing is slightly off, look where I'm going to be. Again, holster. <clears throat> or if I try to pin it, my timing is off. I'm, I'm directly, I'm moving in line of his weapon. He draws that and that, I'm moving this way. Already getting out of the line of fire. At the very least, he's gonna have to move a little bit to shoot me, or if it's a knife, he's gonna have to move a little bit to slap me. So as I'm doing that, I'm also gonna grab here, I hook, this part I can control him. If I grab a person down here, that's what happens. If I grab a person up here, I can manipulate him, I can move his body, so what I'm doing, is as I see those elbows flare, I'm stepping out at a 45 degree angle with my right leg. I'm hooking this elbow, spinning, drawing, and assessing. Now, can he not turn back toward me? Yeah. But I've created distance and I've drawn my pistol. If he tells me to put my hands up and my hands are down, that's a perfect time for me to act because he cannot distinguish me putting my hands up in compliance and me coming here to get offline of the gun and start to take control of it. You don't have to be lightning fast. You just have to act and he has to, he will then react. When he comes to at you with a gun like this, he is already placing himself in a reactionary mode. Just like, again, commonality of technique with the gun disarm, here, reach in here. Now, what am I doing? I'm way inside on him. This is way past me. I'm not doing this, right? Right? Yeah. right. I gotta travel in. And that's easier with a 16 inch barrel because that's a 13. Yeah, I'm here. Now watch my step and watch what my arm does and watch how I release with this hand. You guys are gonna do this, I swear to God. And you're gonna be, fuck, how do I elbow him? Because you're trapping your own hand. There is a transition there, a little slide of hand. So you're here, one. Now watch, I release with this hand as I plunge in. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> Then you can strike him here, however you want to strike him. Here. Threat! Move! Threat! Threat! Step back, tap, rock, 
Assess weight. Now, engage the left target. Right target. Now spread fire or threat. Good job. Scan, assess, and holster. This is going to be two. Make sure your hand's not in front of the muzzle. Make sure you're driving that back. Your rounds will impact the grass. Immediately come to here, three rounds. Boom, get on. Okay, that's what I'm looking for with this drill. Threat! Good. Headshot? Good. When I run this a second time, mind if I try yours? Good. And holster? Give him one more. This guy, one more. There you go. Reload. Reload. Nice job. <laughs> Threat! No, he chased him. Oh, Get yeah. on the top like where it's going to stop. Yeah. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Just trying to get that. Nice. Everybody shoot. Get! Yeah.